Senator Belma, thank you, Madam Speaker. Today, Senators Cardozo, Kuzner, Harder, Klein, Uda, Ross, Yusuf, and myself are sponsor co-sponsoring an event in order to highlight the importance of dialogue between governments and economic and social partners to ensure sustainable and inclusive prosperity for all Canadians and Indigenous peoples. We are living through major disruptions that threaten our prosperity and that of our children, that threaten our democracy and world peace, and that threaten the survival of our planet. In free and democratic countries, the complex challenges we face cannot be resolved solely by the goodwill and good ideas of governments, which are often caught up in the electoral emergency. The most effective strategies, strategies require the ongoing coordinated participation of all players. To this end, Canada, like other free and democratic countries, must complement its policy and strategy development process with the practice of sustained dialogue between governments and economic and social partners in order to share a common understanding and vision, identify win-win solutions, and implement them as quickly as possible. Societies, government may find themselves unable to identify and implement the appropriate strategy to deal with complex issues. A call for individual respons responsibility may not be enough. A shared understanding of the issue built through dialogue and engagement of the entire society around the best solutions are needed. This practice is called social dialogue. The word social meaning socio-economic partners. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development and other United Nations organizations are calling on free and democratic countries to strengthen social dialogue to achieve sustainable development goals and to promote peace. In Canada and the United States, while social dialogue is practiced in many sectors like workforce, local and regional development boards, the terminology itself is less commonly recognized. But not matter, no matter what we call it, dialogue between representatives of different social and economic sectors remain a necessary practice that must be promoted in our democratic institution. The example of the recent pandemic clearly shows that federal, provincial, and territorial governments can work together when the threat is serious. However, during this crisis, Canada could have done better on employment and economic issues if government had worked more closely with organizations representing workers and businesses, as was the case in some countries. I believe the Senate can play a significant role in building a permanent dialogue between all governments and socio-economic sectors. I invite you to come and meet representatives of several social and economic groups linked to the labor market, gathered today from 5 to 7 in the Senator Lounge. Thank you. Merci. Megwitch. Chi nash